Charlie, and this is the tutorial for the Computer and Networking Security Courses Lab 2. In this one, we're going to do some Nessus scans, uh, similar to what we've done in the previous tutorials for the previous course. There's just a slight variation to this one, so let's get started. We're going to start here at the course homepage. Go down here on the left under Course Tools and click on Online Labs. So click this link. That will take us to the Online Lab section, where we want to select the second lab here, number two. And this is the one we're going to be doing an assessment scan using Nessus. So let's go ahead and click this link. This will bring us to the Toolwire Live Lab page. And we're going to scroll down here to Lab Access and click this link here. And that should take us to this desktop right here. So once we get here, the first thing that we need to do is open up the InMap ZenMap GUI. So it's this icon here with the eye on it. So let's double click that and get it going. And once this comes up, I'm going to maximize it so we can see the whole screen. And we need to select a target. So in this case, just click the drop down list. Uh, target's already in the list here. So just click this and then go over to profile on the right. You'll see intent scan is already there. If it's not, just choose it from this drop down list. So let's pick uh, intent scan and then uh, click the scan button here on the right. Now this scan takes about three to five minutes, take longer, take shorter, but um, I'm gonna let all, some of the information here gather and then I'm gonna cut it to the end once it gets all the data. And there we go. So now it's completed scan. You can see the data that's collected and there's a lot of information you can scroll through and review. And you'll see how it uh, found the hosts and it's even put icons down for the operating systems, the assumptions it made. And uh, what we need to do here is capture this information and save it to turn into the instructor. So what we're going to do now is let's go up to scan up here and click this link, uh, click the menu here, scan, and click on save scan. And then we're going to go ahead and give it a name. Let's call it uh, lab number two ZenMap scan. And we need to pick a type it's already selected here and you'll notice there's really nothing in this list but we need to make sure it's in map XML files and then we're gonna put it under the C drive so let's click under to local drive to local disk here and on the right select security strategies and we're just gonna save it here so go ahead and click Save all right now this is done we can go ahead and close out this window we don't need this anymore Okay, the next thing we need to do now is we go ahead and click on the file transfer button up here and go through the dialog to actually download that information that you just saved on your desktop to turn in. Once you've completed that, we move on to the next step, and that is to double click on the Nessus server manager icon. So let's go ahead and click on this one. And once this comes up, you'll notice it will say towards the bottom that the server is running. So we need to add a user. So let's go to manage users, click this button. And we're going to click on the plus sign here in order to add a user. So click the plus sign. Under username, go ahead and type in student. And for the passwords, you'll see those inside the guide. What you're doing here is you're specifying what the, the login is going to be whenever you want to connect up to it with the web browser, which we're going to do in a minute. Check the administrator box and click save. And once we've got that, the user there, you can see it in the list. And let's just go ahead and click the close button. We're done there. And we can close out this window. We've already made our settings. We don't need to keep this running. So now let's uh, go to Mozilla Firefox. Let's launch this. And you'll see that we come to this error page. You can disregard that. It's no big deal. And in here, we're going to type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash local host colon 8834 so here we can go ahead and just for this time anyway uh, click um, I understand the risks add exception we'll wait one second it'll finish up here make sure permanently store this exception is checked and then confirm security exception and you only have to do that once now go ahead and log in here with the information that you entered in the previous screen, so you have student and then that password. Click login. And if this screen pops up, just go ahead and click OK. 
Now the first thing that we need to do here is go over to the Policies tab. So let's click on the Policies tab. We're going to create a policy. So in order to do that, we now need to click on Add. Now we need to give this policy a name. So let's just name it Lab Number 2 Policy. And if you notice now, um, some people have noted that there's no next button and you can't scroll down. So in order to do that, the easiest way is go to view and under toolbars, you don't really need all these toolbars. So let's just go ahead and remove the bookmarks toolbar. And now you'll see that you can see the next button. You can deselect others too if you, if you need to, but that's fine. So just click the next button. You don't need to do anything to these windows, but it's nice to see what, what they are. And if you go to like to this one, for example, and just click on any of these, you'll see their information pops up here. If you click on that, you'll see even more detail here at the bottom. So it's, it's good to, to learn what you're clicking through here. So, but you can click next and then submit here at the bottom once you're, once you're done looking through them and you've officially created a policy. So now what we need to do is go over to scans. We're going to do a scan based on that policy. So let's click the add button and let's just name this, this scan here. Number two, server farm scan. And then it's a run now type. And you can click here and see the other types, but we're going to run now. And then for policy, we're going to select the policy we just created, which is this one right here. And then for the actual targets, let's type in 172.30.0.0 forward slash 24. Okay. And nothing under the targets file. And then click launch scan. And that scan will execute. And you'll notice towards the top up here, um, you see you have your progress bar, but uh, you'll see scan was successfully launched up here. And then your progress bar will start to populate. This can take a very long time. So I'm going to go ahead and just skip uh, through it in the video and cut to the end. Now, this, now that the scan is finished, we're going to go ahead and review the reports on this. So let's go up to the reports tab click on reports and then you'll see the, re the one report that we've done of course from the scan is listed here so we're going to open this one up you see it's completed so let's click it and open it up and here's all the information from the scans of the hosts within that range that we applied and you'll see all the columns here for high medium and low which is what we want to focus on we're going to sort this by the from high so let's go ahead and click this and we're going to sort it with the the most um, high alerts at the top here and so just go ahead and click this host here. And we're going to drill into this host a little more. Let's go ahead and click this. Now once we get in here, you'll see the, the different alerts. And once again, you'll notice off to the right, the columns are, are um, high, medium, and low again. We're going to sort again by high. We want to get uh, the most at the top where we get port 443. You'll see total 19 and go over to port 443. And we're going to click on this one in order to drill down into it a little further. And you'll see all of these alerts pop up here at various various severities. So we'll just select any one. Let's go ahead and click on this one. And you get greater detail on the actual alert. And if there's a solution, risk factors, descriptions, and um, if there's more information, you may have to scroll down a bit. This one doesn't have a lot of information in this particular one. And what we need, you can click on. Uh, different pieces of this. For example, you can go back through the breadcrumbs uh, at the top here if you like, but we're going to go ahead and go back to the server farm scan, back to the beginning, so we can download this report. Let's go over to download report. Let's click on this. Change the download format to HTML export, and then click submit, and it will generate an HTML report for you on the screen. So let's click this button here, and there you go. There's our report. So this particular report we need to do is take a screenshot. So you can, there's, the guide actually explains how to do a screenshot on the remote hosts, but uh, I just went ahead and did a screenshot on my desktop, and then you can take that screenshot and upload it for the instructor. And that concludes this tutorial. Well, I hope you found that tutorial helpful. If you have any suggestions, recommendations, or if you'd like to see any other tutorials done, please leave a comment below or send an email to charlie.tutorials at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.